all right welcome to this video so in this video we're going to be installing pytorch and we'll write a very simple regression program so first of all what is pytorch so pytorch is a deep learning library uh, it is an open source deep learning library released by facebook and it is just like tensorflow but it's much better and much simpler well there's an ongoing debate you know like which is bet better tensorflow or pytorch i prefer pytorch like most of the researchers prefer pytorch but tensorflow has a lot of pr stuff going on so you know it's much more famous and it also came out earlier than pytorch so yeah so who is this video aimed at so well you must be someone who is familiar with a little bit of machine learning and you are looking to you know learn a library to deploy your applications in real world and if you are familiar with tensorflow it, this video will be very easy for you and if you're not then i think well you'll be relatively better than people who have no background right so it will be easy to understand because pytorch is built that way and so first of all let's just see how to install pytorch right so you, you need to log on to pytorch.org well, you don't need to log on just visit the site and then yeah this site right and depending on your configuration here is a list of things that you can choose i have chosen chosen linux then pip and 3.6 and then none because i don't have a graphics card on this pc installed so yeah depending on your configurations you can choose appropriate values from here and then you will get a command to run and th that will install pytorch on your system so it's that easy right there's nothing else so after doing that let's just see how to write a very simple regression program so uh Visual St Studio Code. So I'm using Visual Studio Code as my editor, right? So first of all, we need to import Torch, right? So it it's called PyTorch, but in Python you need to just import Torch. It's the name of the library itself is Torch, but it's written in Python, so it's called PyTorch. So you need to import Torch, and let's import Torch dot nn dot functional. Uh, functional is a package that contains a lot of important functions that we're going to use and then let's create some fake data right so torch dot rand n so size of the data will be 200 by 1 or yeah 200 by 1 which means that there are 200 data points and uh, each of the data point contain one contains one input right so that's it and then what function do we want to uh, guess so or or to map so let's just say we want x dot uh, or x to the power 4 or maybe x to the power 2 but it's too easy so let's just stick to x to the power 4 right and then we'll add some random noise to the data torch dot and n and the size of the noise should be equal to the size of x so here it is so yeah the rand n function is a random number generator and it will take uh, two inputs which is the dimensions of the matrix and so as you can see and to access the size of any given torch variable or torch matrix you just write the variable dot size as i have written here right so it will return the ri uh, right size the dimension of that uh, matrix right so we have generated the fake data uh, there are two ways to uh, generate or to write pytorch programs by uh, one by in, by using inbuilt sequential function which makes it much more easy but we'll first uh, implement our own classes manually so that you can get the concepts and then we'll in the next video probably i'll show you the another way uh, the easier way so yeah so let's set epoch to i don't know let's set to 1500 probably because the data is not uh, very large so we can uh, so learning rate should be equal to let's just say 0 0.05 i'm just guessing here right so let's make our own class class net and it will uh, inherit torch dot nn dot module torch dot nn dot module so when you're making your own neural network class over uh torch module class then torch neural network class you need to import this module right so, and it itself is called module so it's very simple 
then we need to initialize our constructor and constructor will take self and then we'll uh, ask for three inputs that is the number of input layers the number of hidden layers oh there's a type here uh, let me just remove that and the number of output layers And then let's just call this uh, constructor of the super class super and we'll pass net and self and dot in it this oh sorry this will call the constructor of the torch dot nn dot module class so it will initialize all the variables that are running in background you know all the important stuff and then we'll make two variables we just self dot hidden our hidden layer and we'll use torch linear class which is predefined for us and just wait a second i just have to adjust my chair yeah so torch dot nn dot linear so it is a class or it is a function that automatically uh, implements a linear layer fully connected linear layer right torch dot nn dot linear and that's what we want our hidden layer is fully connected to the input layer so uh, and it, it takes two arguments that is the input layer and uh, what is the, uh, the the size of the input layer and the size of the hidden layer right or size of the next layer which is uh, which just makes it linear so let's write there just we have in we have this input here the size of input layer and the size of hidden layer this is copy and paste it here and then another self dot output that will be the output of our not an output will be the output of our you just copy this from here and torch dot linear again a linear function and but this time the input will be the hidden the hidden will layer will be input uh, for the output layer and then the output size size of the output right so we have our network the architecture of our network described right so uh, let's quickly revisit all the things again the super will uh, the super dot init will call the constructor for the uh, torch.nn module and then the self.hidden is uh, the second layer that's the hidden layer of our network we are used torch. oh sorry torch.nn.linear right and you know the input and the output input and the output that's the two arguments the size of the input and the size of the output that torch.nn.linear function takes right now let's just create forward propagating function and just call it forward right and it will take self and input and the input is the input that the user will provide and we will guess or we will uh, perform regression on this input and then guess the output right that's that's it so what this input will do is it will calculate uh, the forward propagation so let's just cal we, we already have the input layer so let's just calculate the hidden layer so to calculate the hidden layer what we can do is we can say hidden is equals to is equal to functional dot value so when i when i had imported uh, torch dot nl dot function i told that it contains some useful uh, useful functions so yeah it contains relu and relu is our activation unit we're going to be using relu right so inside relu let's just pass unactivated unit self dot hidden input right we've already described what self dot hidden is it is a function that takes uh, the size uh, an input of size n input and it will output a hidden layer of size n hidden right and here we have used it now to output let's just make a new variable output which will be equal to uh, self dot output and here we'll pass hidden so <coughs> It's very straightforward, right? The hidden layer, we'll, we are going to pass the inputs and uh, we have already described what this will do. It will create a linear unit and it will just map it into uh, n hidden units. And then again to output, we will, uh, for the output, we will use the hidden of we have already described in the previous function, right? That's it. And then finally, we will return the output that we have generated. So this, yeah.
so yeah we have described the uh, we have generated the architecture right and we have already described how this architecture is connected together right so the video is already more than 10 minutes long so i'm just going to stop right here and in the next video we'll see how to uh, how to run this uh, architecture and how to perform gradient descent and there's a lot more to come so 